photographing animals now for about 14 years, but professionally for the last decade. And I guess I just fell into it. I bought a digital camera and before I knew it, animals became the natural focus of my lens. It was what I preferred, it was what I was getting the best results in, and I just stuck with that pretty heavily from the beginning and just thought, well, that's just what I want to do because it makes me the happiest. Through my photography, I've always had two main aims that I'm very clear on. The first one is to show people how beautiful animals are through images. The second aim is to support, promote and endorse animal rescue. So I always make sure that there's an element of those two things in everything I do. Bushfires across Australia in early 2020 were so devastating. We lost so many animals, people lost their lives, habitat was destroyed that some of it can never regenerate again. It really, truly broke my heart and I felt helpless like so many other people did. to Two Rocks for me was like visiting another planet. There was an area there where we went to which had just pine trees and just, there was just nothing on the ground, everything was gone. There wasn't any source of food and this was a few months after the fires by the time we got there, there was just nothing left. And you know, the ferocity of those fires and the speed of those fires and how fast they went through really shocked me. You could see that by the area that was burnt and damaged. Anything in their path was just decimated. It was horrifying. You can see all the tracks. These are all kangaroo tracks. They've been washed a bit by the rain, but that's all the tracks. Looking to see if there's anything here that could be dangerous to um, the wildlife, like wire or broken glass. But there is no, as much as you've got lots and lots of things growing, there's no, there's no ground cover growing. And that's what the roos would eat. It's taught us an awful lot going out to the feed stations and the water stations. Because we've got cameras out there now, we're able to see what our wildlife are eating and we can see their health and check that they haven't got any injuries. Kangaroos are a, a, a creature of habit, so they go back. They've been following the same tracks. They teach their joeys and those joeys teach their joeys on where to go and where to find food, where to find water. Uh, that's been their home for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, we can't expect them just to go somewhere else to find food and water. If we don't supply that, they'll die. All right, so what I do is I just, I just chuck my hazards on. I go really slow. I'm looking for anything that's injured, um, anything that's lying dead on the side of the road. Um, it's, it's a hot spot through here in particular. But I mean, if you look back behind us, you can't see anything, it's pitch black. Oh, For every injured kangaroo, which is not much left of that one. But there's, there's some poor motorist out there that's, that's injured or traumatised because they've hit a joey. And most people don't know what to do if they come across one, you know? So for every joey that we get into care, this is what happens to their mum, for every joey. So it's not just about raising joeys, it's about all the stuff that goes with it. And sometimes it's heartache. Sometimes, most of the time, it's very rewarding, but other times it can be really quite confronting, as you can see.
I will usually put a stripe down the back from head to tail and usually spray where the pouch is so that someone can see that I've checked the pouch. What I love about carers is that they're making change and the reason I think they can do that job and the reason I love working with them even though it has its dark days is that they're making a difference and there's hope. And I don't photograph animals who have abandoned and don't have any hope. I photograph animals who have been taken into care for whatever reason and who have been given a second chance. When I'm photographing domestic pets, I actually have quite a bit of control over them in a non-controlled way, if that makes sense. So dogs particularly respond well to toys and treats, so I can distract them, give them rewards, get them to sit where I want, get them to do paw. Joey's, it's a little bit more random. They're kind of like, I'm over here. I'm like, okay, well, I'll move to go over there. And then they're like, now I'm over here. I'm like, okay, well, now I'll move over there. But it's just good times. I've had them jump on my head. I've had them jumping up and down on me. I've had them in my face smacking me with their little hands because they think that's fun. And I'm like, I'm trying to take someone else's photo and you're smacking me in the face. They're just adorable. And my overriding goal always in a shoot is to make sure that everyone is safe and that the animals have the best experience in the room. That is my number one priority because from that, I get the best photos. Alex has a, a reputation, not just locally, but all over the world. And with her photos and her contacts, she's exposed us. And without that exposure, we would still be scrambling to get donations and get help and have people understand what we do. Alex has got a gift. When she takes photographs of the joeys, people see the face of innocence and they look at kangaroos and they look at wildlife in a totally different way. When you see Alex's photos, you're seeing the soul of a joey.